Our education system just isn't working well enough. It was designed to cater for everyone, regardless of background or ability. But we still seem to struggle to keep everyone engaged. So just like goes in one ear and comes out the other. It's interesting sometimes, but yeah. most of the time it's just like, I can't be bothered. We just don't seem to learn that much at all. Each year, one in five students still leave school without basic maths and English. Professor Dylan William believes it doesn't have to be this way. A former teacher and government advisor, he spent years researching the best ways to improve our schools. Smart is not something you are. Smart is something you get. We've asked him to test a few simple ideas and put theory into practice to try and improve our children's education. It's one professor, one term, and 24 students in the classroom experiment. For the last six weeks, Professor Dylan William has been running an experimental classroom at a comprehensive secondary school in Hertfordshire. OK, guys, hands up then. Shh. He's trying to increase engagement in this mixed ability class of 12 and 13 year olds. See a few more hands, guys. We've got the same hands every single time. Thank you. The most dramatic change was to ban the use of hands up to answer a question. Molly. Hands down, no hands up. Now, students are chosen at random. Their names are written on lollipop sticks, and one is chosen when the teacher asks a question. Daniela, why should we bother to end slavery? Now, everyone has to take part. There's no place to hide. You shouldn't make people slaves when they don't want them to be. To increase engagement further, the students were given coloured cups, green to show they understand, and red to indicate they need help. Finally, there were mini whiteboards that let every student answer and share it with the class. Storyline. Why? After a sticky start, everyone was getting used to the changes. The teachers were on board. Students, like Sid, were more engaged. Sydney, what do you think a domestic servant might be? I have no idea, but something tells me it's sort of undemocratic. But then an unexpected turn of events. Someone's sticks went missing. Really? Which pot? My pot? I'm very shocked if they did take the sticks out. At the same time, very intrigued. I'd like to know why they felt that they had to take their name out. Shall we have a look? Oh, really? That's very interesting. Emily is gone. I'm very surprised because she used to put her hand up. She used to want to answer questions. Very odd. It turns out that Emily, one of the brightest girls in the class, has removed the sticks herself and taken them home. Do you want me to go get the sticks? <laughs> you know what's going to happen now? The teacher's going to have to check every morning and everybody's name is in there. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it doesn't make sense because you want to answer a question. Yeah, but there's certain questions that you don't want to be asked. It's complicated. <laughs> Put the sticks back so the next time I ask you the question. I do like the pit though. It's... Oh, it just doesn't make sense, does it? No. <laughs> it is different for me because people do know that I'm quite smart. Um, it's, it's different for the other students because they don't normally be so keen or normally put their hand up to answer. So they, I guess they feel all right to just be like, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But to me, it, it does. If I don't know the answer, it's quite embarrassing because I've kind of got this, you know, reputation that I'm smart and I know the answers, but sometimes I don't.
But it's not just Emily. Hi. Sticks are also missing for Daniela and Chloe, Emily's friend and another of the class's top students. I heard something that I've never heard before, which was that Emily had been taking her lollipop sticks out <laughs> of the beaker. <laughs> and we've actually been looking at the lollipop sticks and we've discovered that some sticks are missing. Right. My English <laughs> stick actually went missing. I did oh. not take my English <laughs> stick out. <laughs> so Miss replaced it with a red pencil. Uh, OK, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Daniela? Um, I think only my history one's gone. OK, well, what, what happened to that one? I don't know. Oh, OK. You feel a bit intimidated when you get the answer wrong because people will look at you like, no, that's not the right answer, and you're just like, oh, sorry. Like, you feel like, you feel like really sort of ashamed that you don't know the answer. It's not the teachers that make you feel so ashamed. It's just like people looking at you. It can get quite frustrating that when you do know the answer, you never get picked. When you don't know the answer, you usually get picked and you look like a right idiot just sitting there like, I don't know the answer. What I'm really curious about is that you feel embarrassed yeah, about getting definitely. things wrong, but this is a school. If you knew all this stuff before you came, there wouldn't be any point in being here with that. And so I'm quite worried about anything that makes you think that you can't make mistakes in classrooms. Because if you're not making mistakes, what the teacher's giving you to do isn't hard enough for you. You know, if you're just getting the answer right all the time, just because that feels good, you're really just showing off, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. The high-achieving girls have clearly struggled. They, they used to be in the limelight. Now they're not the sole focus of attention anymore and that's causing them some pain. But it's important to remember that they haven't got any less intelligent. What's happened is the teacher has focused them not on being right all the time, but on how much they're learning in class. And that's an important transition that every kid needs to make. Despite unexpected problems with some of the students, Dylan is determined to make further changes. He wants to push the students to engage even more. What I want to tackle next is an obsession that is affecting practically every single school in the country, and it's having the effect of lowering the achievement of our students. That obsession is great. Hey, guys, right here. It is. You got four Bs. Well done. Oh, my Lord! Oh, my Lord! Five A's. Oh, my Lord! A four C. In Year 8, 4 is an average grade, 5 is good and 6 is excellent. Emily, 6A, fantastic, well done. 6A, I am good. What'd you get? 4A. I got 16. 5C. Dylan believes that while a bit of competition can be good, when there's a big gap between the high and low performers, the lower ones just give up. What did you get? I got a full C because she thinks I copied it from the internet. Sid doesn't like grades. What you get normally is you get all the people who have seen their grade and have got like a six or something. They're always looking round and asking other people, what grade did you get? And I think it's partly because I want to like raise their own self-confidence sort of to think oh yeah I've got better than everyone else for others like classmate Jesse only one thing really matters the first thing that I look at when I get my RC back is um, the grade I just focus on the on my um, level that I got Dylan believes that with all the focus on the grades students don't read comments that can help them improve good morning so his next idea for the teachers is what he calls comments, not grades. That rather than giving kids marks or scores, that you give comments. Comments about how to improve. If your feedback is causing kids to think and engage, then that's great. If, you're, if your feedback is causing an emotional reaction or comparing yourself with somebody else, then you're lost. The way that the system works, not just in this school, in a lot of state schools generally, is it's very uh, level driven. You yeah. know, it, the one thing that, you know, inspectors come and ask us, do you know what level you're at? Yeah. You know, and of course the, kid, the kids, you know, they want to know, miss what level? You know, you give back a piece of work, maybe a piece of homework that you haven't given a level. Miss, what's the level for this? They're, they're, they're sort of almost brainwashed into needing to know yeah. their levels. This is a natural reaction. 
But the point is we've got to, <coughs> we've got to get away from that and, and focus on what's next. If you're marking kids' work, giving lots of helpful, detailed comments, and then just go and give the books back to the kids and say, do this in your own time, you're wasting your time. Because the kids who most need to work on that improvement won't do it. It's Wednesday afternoon, and citizenship teacher Mr. Duval is the first to try comments, not grades. Okay, so can you walk in silently? Okay, Sid and uh, Jade, can you hand the books out, please? Right. I've been marking them the last few days, and I've done something slightly different, OK? You can read through it. I want you to look at my comments, but there's something else that's slightly different. So that's yours back. OK. I'll explain to you in a minute. It's Lydia. OK, as soon as you get your ILC, OK, I want you to read through. Where's the grade? We don't get a level. You won't be getting your grade today, OK? Well, we'll be getting because That's the only reason I've done it. What I'd like you to do, <laughs> I basically want to concentrate on the comments and not the grades, because I feel you can improve if you read my comments. Only reading the comments doesn't have the desired effect. Jesse is not pleased at all. I'll stop drawing, Harry. You've got a question to ask me? It says that I have got, uh, that I have a lack of effort. Why do you think, what's the lack of effort? What activity no, was that for? I've put loads of effort into it. OK. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't laugh. So it's not a great attitude to have. You've asked, sir, why you're lacking in effort. I explained to you what exactly what you're lacking. lacking so then you put on this I don't care yeah, attitude. I'm not lacking effort, that's what I'm saying. So but don't I, get it on my work. I suggest otherwise that you are. Because it's confusing. I didn't get a comment. It must have been so brilliant that you did. I'm sure you've got a comment in there. I didn't, you didn't have yeah. a comment. Oh, I'm sure there's a little comment. I can't write it though. Okay. Nope. Okay, so. Yeah, but I don't get it unless I get my grade. We'll talk to. Individuals afterwards. So. This seems negative. No, it's not negative. Yeah, but the way you've written the comment seems negative. Oh, we'll talk to individuals after the lesson and we'll go through it then, okay? Um, I just wanted my grade because I always look at my grade the first time I get it in this like. Like, grades, like, the strongest part of okay. it, you know what I mean? So it's just like, take that away. I don't know. I didn't like the comments either, so that's what made it worse. I wasn't expecting that, that reaction to be that negative, really, and that strong. Um, I was expecting them to say, sir, where's my grade? And I say, read your comments. Oh, OK, no problem. But to react the way they did... Um, I couldn't foresee that, no way. But it's the high-achieving girls who are really not impressed. I would be happy to know what grade I've got. Yeah, I'm the same as Emily. Yeah, wouldn't, I want to know what I've got out of the work that I've put in. Everyone was kind of annoyed, but I noticed that it seems to be the people who seems to be getting the good grades mostly, who seems to be the most annoyed, which I think that's probably because of they just wanted to know whether they'd done as good as they normally do or not. After such a hostile reception, the kids' obsession with grades is going to be hard to crack. It's seven weeks into the experiment, with all the changes, Dylan thinks it's time to involve another group of people. Every parent I've ever met wants to get more involved in their children's education. They want to do all they can to support their children. But often, parents tell me that they don't know how. He wants the parents to engage with what's been happening in the classroom. So he invites them to a parents' evening with a twist. What we're going to do is we're going to have a nice neat line. I'm going to give you something as we're coming in. So All right. Okay. This will be the first test. See the other parents on time as well. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> Very quickly as a start of activity. Normally, it's just a brief chat with a handful of teachers. Right. 
Today we are going to look at volcanoes. But tonight, the parents of Daniela, Harvey, Jade, and the others are going back to school. There are some free seats. Oh, I don't like school. <laughs> uh, can we have mobile phones away in lesson, please? Thank you. Just like the kids, there's no place to hide. Let's just think about the words that came to, to mind. Mr Foster. <laughs> oh, Could Mr Foster... Don't start picking people out. Oh, oh, it is Mr Foster. Yeah. I'm afraid you've been picked out by the almighty sticks. Oh, lovely. OK, so each one of you has got their name on a stick and if, you, if you're picked, I'm afraid you've got to go with the first answer. So could you tell me some of the words that you thought of? Some of the words that... To... Yeah, something, something relating to these words. Right, story, bedtime. OK, lovely. So number one was where do volcanoes form? Mr Skeggs. Oh, Chloe, you've written the wrong thing down. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. Chloe has written, they form at hotspots such as Hawaii. Why do they actually form in these places? So either at the hotspots or at the plate margins. Mr Jupp. Uh, they, they form there because that's where the tectonic activity is. Oh, Mrs. Jupp, why is... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it is random, so I can't actually... Um, no, because Britain is currently a tectonically quiet place. Excellent. So it links with the other questions. <laughs> quiet place at the moment. We don't live on one of those edges of the plates. I think there's some children that enjoy being picked in the class and others that don't, but, yeah, um, I would prefer not to be picked, so it wasn't... <laughs> I think it is quite nice by having your, having your parents there because at least when they get picked, you know, they, you know what, how you feel when you feel a bit nervous. They know how you feel then. Miss Redmond yeah. is obviously the boss because you can tell by his stature and his dress. Excellent. The boss is kind of telling the one with the whip what to do because, um, like, he doesn't look like he's very happy to do it because... Like, they're both black, and I don't think they've ever seen, like, a white person. Frankie and Johnny were lovers. Oh, my God, how they did love. They swore to be true to each other. As true to stars above, he was her man. But he done her wrong. Can we have a big round of applause, please, everyone? You guys, if I could ask you, please, if you hold your whiteboards up, please, and just go around and have a quick look at everything people have picked up. No it's the first time the parents have seen what's going on in the class. The interaction, bringing the fun into learning, I think that's, that's very good. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm surprised, but positively surprised at what they're doing. It was interesting to see how things have changed. Um, rather than being told things, you were actually given a chance to put your view across. Sometimes she finds it hard to understand why I struggle in lessons and why I like don't really do well in some lessons and do well in other lessons so she understands now yeah, hopefully. I understand where you're coming from now when you say why different things are harder but yeah. yeah it's good it was a lot different from how I thought it was going to be it was it was quite interesting and it was interesting to see how the children react at school and it is so much more laid back from when we were at school when we were at school you were sitting quietly that's why I was sitting there going Catherine shh 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 but it's just not like that anymore and it's a lot more fun and a lot more interactive and a lot more enjoyable to learn. And for some, the effect is more profound. It gives the parents more information. I, I feel more hands-on now. I know what's going on in Jade's school life. This is much more informative than what Jade tells me and it's normally, oh, I done, didn't do well in this and I didn't do well in that and I try to ask her, don't I? And all I get, because she's really quiet anyway, so this is shown me a lot more and it's made me feel better as a parent to be quite honest with you because I watched her interact more than I've ever seen her interact before with anybody. She wanted him dead for what he'd done. He was her man but he done her wrong. Fantastic. Can we have a huge round of applause for everyone who's done that? For several weeks now, the students have been grappling with major change and it's unsettling the class. Before, Emily. I actually can only say that. 
Dylan's concerned that some of the top students, like Chloe and Emily, the girls who removed their sticks, are still not behaving as well as they were. It's an attention thing as well. I think there's, there's a lot of that happening, where they were getting the focus before, not just because they're they answering the questions, but because Spotlight was on me. Now they're doing things like drawing at the back of their book, drawing on hands, playing with hair, you know, these disruptive things that weren't there before and now have come into place and that has made me a little bit cross. Mm, yeah. Because now what's happening is I'm finding kids who were good before and now play in the bad role <laughs> and the bad kids as such are now taking on the good role, you know, which is fine, but I don't want the, the good kids yeah. to suddenly turn yeah. bad. I want them to improve. Yeah. Dylan thinks there's a simple answer to re-engage these girls, the mini whiteboards. I think what I what, what really want to emphasise to you is that the mini whiteboards are very powerful techniques for letting them show you that they know the right answer. Everyone's in the spotlight. So it really is, you know, it's, 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 it's a win-win situation because the students are engaged and you're getting high-quality information about which students are understanding and which, and which students aren't. I know it's hard, but if you can keep as many of those plates spinning at the same time as possible, then the, the impact, I think, will be much bigger. Dylan knows the whiteboards can make a difference. When they were used earlier in the term, the class embraced them wholeheartedly. You've got 15 seconds left to write. Holding your boards up, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Could have been closer to the audience. That's a really good point. In fact, Dean, I think you're really nailing this whole idea of uh, yeah, response. If you're stuck on something, you like, when you're writing in your books, you're independent. But if people's putting their boards up, like, you can look around and get help, basically. I like the whiteboard, because it gets more, if you think about it, it gets more information down and everything, and also it's fun. I like the whiteboards because um, you can get your answer, like, quicker, and um, at least everyone can answer that way. And also it's, it's a bit more interesting than just writing it in your book. But it's not just Emily and Chloe's behaviour Dylan wants to tackle. He thinks the entire class can be better behaved. So he's introducing a technique called secret student. Will you get that for me tomorrow? It's based on a concept Dylan discovered while doing research in an American middle school. The idea is to make students more responsible for their own behavior by using peer pressure and positive reinforcement. Today I'm going to talk to you about secret student, okay? Each day a student will be selected at random to be the secret student who will represent the whole form. The teachers are told who the secret student is. The secret student will receive either a tick or a cross for every lesson that day. To get a tick you must behave well and complete all work sets. If you get three or more ticks in one day, you get a point for the whole form. As you can guess from the title, because it's secret student, you will not know about it. You will not know if you are being watched or not. Secret student runs for the next four weeks until the end of summer term. If the students collect enough points, there's a reward. Much to the delight of William. And our top prize, a trip to Alton Towers, OK, for everybody. You could be the secret student today and you could get a point for the whole form. Um, do we... Is there a student, secret student today? Yes. Uh, do we know? No, because it's secret. The first day will be a real test because the secret student is William. A class report. William's a little bit of a show-off and... He doesn't take much encouragement to stand up at the front of form time and give us a song. He's very theatrical. He likes to get involved in all those kind of activities within school. And I think, actually, he brings that side of him into lessons a fair bit as well, which sometimes can get him into trouble, so he just needs to work out where the boundaries are. First up is geography with Miss Pellet. Miss, um, Miss Jenna told us that we need 
need to remind you that it's secret studio today. Yeah, I know. Put five mats together. We haven't mixed them up with anyone else's. And they're paper clips, so that I don't mix them up when I put them in a pile. So I need to take these in. So I do need them for other classes. Josh shouted out to the whole class, any one of you could be secret student, be quiet. And then they reminded him that he could be, so <laughs> he needed to be quiet. So they all are very aware that it could be them. Yeah, I think the secret students, they will get a tick, so they have been very good, so it's a good start. <laughs> Next, it's Miss Overbury's English class. You bunch. <laughs> I'm going to wait until everyone's listening, and if you're late for break, then it's your own fault, because I'm ready to go now. After break, it's science. Good. Yeah, right. Whoa. I've got a lunchtime, William. And I can tell you, okay, I have not put a tick in today. Okay? So for this lesson, the individual, okay, did not earn a tick. I know that you're going to want to know the result of our secret student yesterday because it was our first day. And I'm a bit disappointed to tell you that actually we didn't get a point yesterday. But we were really, really close, but unfortunately we didn't get a point. What was our behaviour like yesterday? Be honest. Josh? Um, loud and chatty. So loud and a bit chatty. So if whoever it was, it might have been because we're, everyone was a bit loud and chatty. And remember though, because it can be any single one of you, you all need to make sure that you are not talking. Because Secret Student is about positive reinforcement, Miss Jenner only reveals the name when the Secret Student gets a point. I mean, I think that yesterday, I think that we was all, like, not brilliant. So it would be unfair to just point the finger on one person and say, you've done it because it could have been any of us, and I don't think we'd have got it yesterday. If the person did bad and everyone knew about it, it would, and everyone, like, starts having a go at them, it wouldn't be... Maybe out of order. Five, six, five, six, seven, the next day, and again, the secret student is chosen at random, and again, it's William. Even though he's not aware of this, will yesterday's loss have an impact on the way he behaves today? time to get used to like the actual secret student because some people forget like I forgot yesterday in science but today I think I've done pretty well much better behavior today I have to say today has been perfect so yeah I don't know maybe I'm not too sure I think they were a little bit upset when they found out I think they thought it was gonna be easy and I think the minute that they found out that on the first day they didn't get it, I think that made a huge difference to them. Yesterday, the person that was secret student, OK, has gained us our first point. Woo! So I'm very, very pleased. And actually, William, it was you. <laughs> yeah! So well done. You got four ticks. What lesson do you think you Science. got across in? Science. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what you got across in, but you got four ticks. Put all your kit into your bags, please, and into your boxes. The class has its first point. But if secret student is going to work, everyone needs to be on best behaviour for another four weeks. The teachers of 8HJ have just started to experiment with Dylan's idea of comments, not grades. Most of the students already hate the idea. Right, it's Friday and next in the firing line is history teacher Miss Shepherd. I'm going to give them their projects back. 
but I've given them comments, so good comments and targets to improve, but I haven't given them a grade. I've kept the grade written in my mark book. Um, well, I added in a column for sort of room for pupil comment, so hopefully that will encourage them to, having read their comments, actually think about them, reflect on them, and, and sort of write down something tangible. OK, quiet then in three, two, one. OK, so I've done the comments, but no grades on this, OK? So, oh, no. Well, read the comments. Shh. Read the comments. Read the comments, Jessie, and just see sort of what you think of them. What I've done is I've created a space underneath it, Daniela. In this box, I want you to write down, like, what do you think of, of your targets? Are they fair? Am I talking complete nonsense? Without a grade, they start to compare comments. <laughs> what did you get for your... <laughs> Emily, where, how, where did you get the all excellence and everything? Oh, oh, I got one excellent and all the rest good. Oh, I got all excellent but then two good. Oh, it's not bad. Yes. Guys, are we reading the comments? Mine is good. Yeah, no, I don't, I can't I don't understand. Really like the comments, so I didn't look great. It's not my comments. Come on, guys, comment here. What do you think of the targets I've given you? So, do you think these are good targets? Or do you think they're not good targets? Did you read all these, yeah? Yeah, so do you think these are good targets for you? What will you try and work on, yeah? Eventually, Miss Shepherd's persistence pays off. It's a fair comment. What are you going to work Miss, I've finished it! I think um, that that is the most I've seen any students read comments. Like... Ever. The comments show that I'd done better in my history than my citizenship because my citizenship had a lot of negative feedback but my history had more good comments. Um, yeah, I think it's clear because she put exactly what I could do next time to get a better grade and what, how, um, what further details I'd need to go into. Previously I've handed these types of projects back and it's like, oh, I've got a 4A and then... Seriously, it will end up in the bin. You look at the end of the lesson and the entire thing will be in the bin. And you're like, well, you spent ages making this. I've spent ages marking it. Why is it in the bin? Like, it means nothing. But, I mean, I don't know if these guys would do that anyway. But, yeah, definitely, it, seem, it seemed to me they were spending a lot of time looking at the comments, which is fantastic, really, and I'll definitely use that again. But the craving hasn't disappeared. I would love to know my grade. That <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. I need to know what my grade is. It's really frustrating. You're just <laughs> like, but I just want to know my grade. But like, I, I do care about the comments, but my grade is so important to me. Is that the main thing? Yeah. Despite the students' reactions, Dylan is keen to continue with the no grade rule. But just how eager are the teachers? Yeah. How long do you think you could go without giving them a level or a grade? Well, I wouldn't want to go very long without giving them a level or a grade because, mm. you know, as you know, the whole aim is for the students to know what, what level they're on and, and sort of take control of their own learning by knowing their level and knowing how to progress. And also, I think the constant badgering for telling them uh, what their grade would be. I think they'd want to know pretty soon. But I think I'd be the same, to be honest. Yes, if I course. did a bit of work, I would want a grade. I, I wouldn't want to go... I wouldn't want to say, oh, you did this well, but improve here, here and here. I'd want to go, did I get an A or did I get a B? We're a nation hooked on grades and national curriculum levels. Every single piece of work, the student wants to know what level they've reached and the teachers give them these grades or these levels and kids don't work for things unless they get levels on them. It's absolutely crazy. We've got our kids hooked. We are like drug pushers. We've got our kids hooked on levels and it's going to be very hard to get them off. With sceptical students and teachers, is there any chance of weaning the students off their addiction before the end of term? So, on Thursday, the secret student for our form did 
receive a point. Secret Student okay. is now in its second week. And on Friday, we also got another point, and the Secret Student was Jack. So can you please give Sabrina and Jack a big round of applause? Excellent. The class pulls together and get a point on every single day. <laughs> the teachers also get into the swing of it. Katie, are you the secret student? Are you letting your class down at this moment? Mm. Question. At first, I did think it was a little patronising, a bit, mm, is, this, is this really right for a secondary school? Um, but in actual fact, yeah, they, they have responded to it. I mean, the response that I, when I put up the slide, they immediately went, Katie? There's one famous advert said, it could be you. Uh, can I just remind you, Year 8, can I remind you about your secret students? One of you in here is the secret student today. I definitely noticed that when I mentioned and reminded them about the secret student, it did have an impact. When I said it again, it brought them down. So the more times I say it, probably, the more it'll work. It's more just a case of, of at what point in the lessons I actually want to bring them all to attention and, and speak to them. Who am I waiting for? I certainly hope it's not the secret student, that's for sure. Oh. I think it does work as a class as a whole. Um, I think... It does need gentle prompting because they they sometimes forget. So I, I you know whenever it gets a little bit too rowdy, I'll uh, I'll just nonchalantly kind of go, oh you know just still doing the secret student kind of thing, and then it does tend to quiet down. On balance, do you think this kind of idea of a secret student is a good way to get a class to behave? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah, and if we get to Autumn Towers, we're just going to be crazy. Okay. <laughs> Our teachers. Reminding you of Secret Student if the classes begin to misbehave? If the noise ever goes up, they're just like, remember Secret Student? Everyone's like... Mm. And it works, does it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some people in my class, like, say, if we're mucking around, they say, Secret Student. I think we're seeing that the Secret Student idea is beginning to work. Teachers have always told children to behave, and the best teachers have always got children to take some responsibility for their own behaviour. But what we're now beginning to see is the effect of peer group pressure. And I think getting that group effect is a really positive step in getting the class to take responsibility for everybody else's behaviour. But is Secret Student working well enough for its biggest challenge? Liam. Liam is our selected student today and he can be quite lively with his behaviour sometimes, letting him down a little bit. He sometimes doesn't try because he'd prefer not to try and do badly than to really try and still not succeed. The first lesson of the day is Miss Overbury's English class. Liam, um, Blood and Satan. Blood and Satan, yes indeed, yes yeah, what else? Because it's big and bold. Perfect. You couldn't have said it better. Lovely, Sid. I thought he answered some questions very well. I think generally for Liam as well, he was very well behaved. He's been known to be off the walls, and today he was actually quite calm and collected and focused. But can Liam keep up the good work in Mr Wirakone's science lab? <laughs> Lim, Lim, in spite of him, it's cold, like wrinkly. No, what does it do? Have a guess. Nothing is dead. No, but what would I have done? What? No. There are just a couple of lessons left for Liam to get things back on track. This way. The following day, Miss Jenner tracks down Liam with some news. I don't know if you've heard, but you're actually our secret student on Monday. OK? And you got us a point for the form. OK? So, well done. That was really good. I was biting my nail, was worrying which way it was going to go. And I think we were really pleased that it went a positive way, because I think that's a really good thing for you, that it's a point, and that I got to share that with the whole form, that you got us a point. Because I know sometimes our behaviour has been a little bit wobbly recently, hasn't it? Keep doing the things that you know that you did to get those ticks. 
think about why it might have been really close. Okay, go and enjoy the rest of your lesson. See you later. Bye. The students continue to rack up points and dance teacher Miss Klube notices a new attitude. I think for students like Liam, it's made a huge difference. Um, I've definitely noticed an improvement in his behaviour. Um, he's really taken responsibility for that. In fact, I've seen their behaviour over the last term has generally been a lot better, although they were quite a good form to begin with. I have seen some of them really stepping up to the mark. Who left their trainers? But once again, the changes are still unsettling the class in unexpected ways. The, a couple of the high-achieving kids have been a bit chatty, not paying attention as much, maybe not even completing the work, which normally they would do. The pupils would be Emily, uh, Sabrine and Chloe, probably. Some pupils have become slightly more disengaged during lessons. And I seem to think it's the more higher ability kids who used to help dominate the class in terms of answering and taking part in everything the teacher was trying to do. Dylan thought the whiteboards would help solve the problem of the brighter kids' behaviour. But he's worried that the girls are still not responding. He calls the teachers together to find out what's going wrong. The thing I'm really worried about, and I'm really quite worried about this, is that we seem to be losing some of the higher achieving students. Now, the idea behind No Hands Up was always to, to bring in some of the students that we weren't hearing from. And the way it's working out at the moment, we seem to be losing some of the higher achieving students, particularly some of the girls. Now, you know, they, they were used to getting all the attention when they were raising their hand for everything. But now it's, it seems that they feel that they're losing out. And if we end up building up the, the quiet students and losing the able students, then this will be a, a disaster. And so I was wondering, you know, how many of you are using the whiteboards currently? Um, yeah, and the whiteboard, I think the whiteboard is a good thing because it shows everyone's got an answer and it encourages yeah. the ones who wouldn't normally put their hand up to do it. Right. Well. Uh, what about in, what about in um, geography and? Uh, I haven't Harry. used the whiteboards yet. No. I haven't seen them for. Okay. So I've been on and off recently. Actually, okay. seeing them because of the inset days and things. I will try and use them in geography, but it's just been as well using the other techniques. Yeah. So you don't want to use cups and whiteboards and no. everything all in one lesson. What about science? I mean, are you using the, the whiteboards there? Um, no, I've been, I haven't used them yet. So I could use them. The, the principles that these techniques are meant to underpin finding out whether the kids have learned something before you move on, creating engagement for the whole class. Those are things that are never going to go away. And I'd be very disappointed if you think that you can go back to teaching the way you were before as soon as I, you know, head off into the sunset. They care very much about showing you that they know. And we have to find a way of letting them show you that they know the answer. But without going back to the bad old days where they were allowed to dominate the classroom conversation. The teachers realise the success of the project now lies with them. Uh, right. I personally haven't used their techniques enough to uh, see an increase in the pupil engagement. The problem we were dis uh, discussing about losing their higher ability kids, uh, maybe introducing whiteboards into the remainder of my lessons and hopefully they'll be able to uh, express their opinions. And there's been a lot of lessons where like, the lesson's already planned and it's difficult to try and change the lesson to fit something in it. I definitely want to use the whiteboards more. We have to get the teachers using the mini whiteboards more. And some of the teachers have really embraced this. They're finding it ways, a way of really getting to grips with what the students have understood. But other teachers are not yet convinced of their value. Uh, and it's partly to do with the fact that they're tired. It's close to the end of term. You know, constantly innovating as we have been through this project is, is very tiring for the teachers. But nevertheless, if we're going to make this work, we have to find ways of getting every single teacher to make better use of the mini whiteboards. But Dylan's convinced there's still time to turn things around. Hiya. Yeah. With the end of term approaching, he pays a visit to Miss Overbury's English lesson to see if the students are still addicted to getting grades. We are 
we're going to be doing our campaigns. Harvey's going to give out half of these. Thank you very, very much, Harvey. Miss, what level did I get? Ah, I want you, to, first of all, to read the comments. Um, why don't you read the comments and see if you can, if you can answer the questions? I know. Some students quietly get on and read their comments. Previously, Miss would have just given you a grade for this work, wouldn't she? And you haven't got a grade on here. How does that make you feel? Disappointed. Why? Right. So I want to see what grade I've got. Isn't it better to get the feedback first so you can improve it? No. No, you just want to get the grade. I actually want to know what my grade is, though, because I want to know how well I did. Yeah. I know she's given me comments, but I really want to know what my grade is as well. Read the comments carefully, see if you can answer the question. At the start, Jessie hated the idea. Has she changed her mind? I don't like just getting the comments. Why? Because I, the only reason that I do the work is for the grade, basically. Why? So I know what grade I am. Because I don't like reading things. <laughs> I mean, do you feel that it has converted them? No. Um, no. Um, you know, I, I think we've got some students who understand why the grades might be harmful, but they still want them. Yeah, I think it's going to take a, a, a while for the kids to get used to this. Hmm. And I think we are going to have to keep on giving them levels because they're so hooked on them. Yeah. I just would like to decrease the frequency. But on the other hand, I think that getting rid of the, the levels does make the kids into better learners. So although it's never too early to get them off the levels, it's probably also never too late. Too late, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Almost the end of summer term and the final week of Secret Student. The class is just two points away from the top prize of a trip to Alton Towers. Miss Jenner rallies the troops. Boys, bottoms, floor. We must make sure that we stay focused, we keep thinking about Secret Student, and that we make sure that we get those at least those last two points to ensure that we get that top prize. You might be lazy, William, and then you might not end up getting a point at all. OK, let's get ourselves changed, please. Remember, you could be a secret student today. Today's secret student is Emily. Well, you don't go to student services in my lesson to do the trip. Only 15 minutes late. I will email Miss Jenner and Mr Shaw and let him know. I'm a little bit concerned, once again, that there are certain people in here who are just chatting. Final warning. Emily, come sit here, please. Emily, Emily, sit here. <laughs> I've got a real big moan to have and actually I'm well I consider myself and I'm sure Miss does as well quite a positive person but actually this morning I feel quite upset I looked at the secret student sheet this morning because I'm going to check it every day to see how you're getting along and actually we didn't get a point and we weren't close to getting a point at all I think, looking at the amount of crosses that person got in the day, that actually the behaviour of the whole form group, and I know, because I've spoken to some teachers, that it was not good at all. If you think that every day, oh, it doesn't matter. And the person who was our secret student yesterday, if everyone behaves like that, you won't get the top prize. And you've done so well when it's been so difficult, and at the end, you just let me down. And you let your teachers down, you let yourself down, and you let each other down. If the class doesn't pull together, the trip to Alton Towers will be off. They've just four days to turn it around. OK, fantastic. Most of us have got there. Come on. In the remaining days of the term, the whiteboards are back in circulation. Authors, if you know... Supplies, this way. Well done, OK. So can you go in quietly now, OK? 
When you get your mini whiteboards, I want you to tell me what puberty is, okay? Now, you can hold back with your questions for the moment, okay? And I want you to write it down. I want you to shout it out. I want you to write down what you think it is, okay? Let's really sketch out your ideas. Okay, can we please hold up our whiteboards? Please hold up your whiteboards. Don't draw on the mat. Don't draw on that. How do you know your sexuality? Very good question. What do you think, Sid? How does someone know what their sexuality is? When they're older and what they think about. When they're older is what you think about. But there can be some confusion, OK? And that's why people start feeling a bit isolated. That's something you have to come to your own conclusion when you're older. What it is, when it starts... Have you noticed a difference in the last couple of weeks? Okay. It's definitely improved because um, I really didn't like the lollipop sticks and now... Um, instead of just having some people being picked, you can give your answer, but in different ways now. They use them quite a lot yeah. recently. Which, which teachers in particular? Um, Miss Overbreeze, you've right. been using them a lot. Uh, Miss Pellet. You were saying earlier that you, you find it a bit frustrating that, that you can't show the teachers you have the answer. Does the mini whiteboard satisfy that? Does it, does it, does it address that problem for you? Yeah, because um, that gives a chance for everyone to show that they know the answer. And that they have to, um, they have to put the answer up so the teacher knows that everyone understands it. At last, Emily and Chloe have come around to the changes. They were used to owning the classroom and struggled with the new equality. For them, it really has been a learning experience. I thought that you had to be right all the time, otherwise you were stupid. Like, if you got something wrong, like, you weren't, like... You weren't as high as the other people and you weren't learning as much as you could. But now I realise that making mistakes is learning. I, I think Chloe summed up that. That's right. I want people to, like, when they've made mistakes, realise that it doesn't matter and you are learning from it, so don't worry about what other people think, cos they're obviously going to make mistakes too. There's another result as Secret Student comes to an end. You did get a point on Tuesday. You also got a point on Wednesday. And you got a point today, so you got 21 yeah. points. <laughs> The weeks of good behaviour pay off and the class makes its way to Alton Towers. They've formed quite a bond with everything that's been going on in the project and they seem to have the friendship groups. It's not such a clear divide. Everyone seems to be communicating a little bit more with each other. The trip brings to an end 12 long weeks under the microscope for the class. The class has taken on no hands up. A burst of exercise every day. Cups and whiteboards. An absence of grades. And been given extra responsibility through secret student and student observers. So what difference has Dylan's experiment made to the class? I certainly think that in terms of their classroom participation, it's been amazing. And um, I think I'd go as far as to say I think they enjoy being in the classroom more. HJ probably have made more progress, probably because I find their behaviour a lot better than the other Year 8 classes since sort of Easter. So that just makes learning and teaching a lot easier. I think the confidence um, in being able to give answers, particularly those who were refrain from answering questions. I, I, I notice there's more confidence 
in, in what they're saying, also just the fact they're, they're willing to have a go. There's that element of the unit, and I think mm. that's what, in some ways, the technique's really brought out, especially like, you know, secret student, you know, the, the, the sticks things. It's this idea of we're not just an individual in a class, we're a class as a whole, mm -hmm. and we need to work as a whole. And I think that really did bring them together. What does it feel like to be in your well, classroom? It just feels like a happy environment, like, for, for people to work at in. And is that different from how it used to be? Yeah, it was. It was just like playing some people talking at the back. I think it's better now because you appreciate that other people need the chance to talk as well. Because usually it was me and Emily, we were talking all the time, always putting our hands up. But now we give other people a chance, so I think it's good for them. I've realised that everyone else learns more through this way. And because they struggled learning the other way, yeah that it's better because everyone gets to learn more, not just the people that learn easier or find it easier to remember things and get higher grades. It's that everyone learns more. But did the experiment have any effect on the student's academic achievement? Dylan examines the results for English, maths and science for all of the year eight classes, going back to the start of the school year. He analyzes the data and discovers in science there's no difference. But in the other two subjects, it's another story. And what we found was that in English and maths, the students in 8HJ had made significantly greater progress than the other year eight classes in the summer term. I'm gonna be asking you to go next door where the computers are all set up with a file ready to go. I'm very, very relieved to be quite honest because I thought it was a really long shot to try and have a statistically significant impact on a student's achievement in just one term. But we've, we've done it. We've actually made a difference to these students' achievement in English and maths, two of the hardest subjects to actually change things quickly. In fact, according to the teachers' assessments, the class learned twice as much in the summer term as they would have expected. Hello, 8HJ. It's been four months ago since I first met you at that evening we had to introduce you to the project. But what's been really powerful about this experience for me is the insight that you've all had into what's going on. That you've understood why we're trying to do what we're doing. You've understood sometimes the changes have been uncomfortable. A lot of you didn't like things like the lollipop sticks when we started. But you've all persevered with it. And I think we have a story here to tell that will be valuable for other schools to hear. Not just Hartswood, other schools in Hertfordshire and indeed all over the country. What needs to happen is to stop the teachers like forgetting to use things. They need to be doing it all the time. And I think the only way you can be doing that is if it's the whole school where it's been happening. So stuff like the sticks and everything and all the whiteboards, they ain't just like, oh, it's 8H day, we better get the box of whiteboards out. They've just, it's out all the time and they do it for every lesson. And that's just what the school has decided to do. This month, it's starting to train all of its teachers so the sticks, techniques like the whiteboards and comments not grades can be introduced in every class. What we've done here is actually scalable to every single class in this school and indeed every single school in the country. So if we can actually focus on improving the quality of classroom experiences, we can have a significant impact on education in this country. You can watch Dylan William involved in the school season debate and explore ideas from the programme further at bbc.co.uk slash school season. While tomorrow at seven, author Toby Young attempts to set up Britain's first so-called free school. Now, who thought washing mushrooms before you cook them could be so important? MasterChef is next.